Hello guys, this is Sivam back again with a new video on our video series of CSI and GRF for Sciences, December 2019. So in this video series, I am going to explain you questions from part B as well as part C. Sorry for the delay guys because I was taking classes so I haven't time for this. So hope you understand guys. So without wasting time, let's start the video. I am going to explain first 10 questions from part B and I will tell you the concept behind it as well as why that option is correct. What is the reason? Okay so uh, concept behind it the reason and all so without wasting time let's start with meadows and grizzles the first question from part b that is uh, on meadows and grizzles now this meadows and grizzles or also called uh, divergent plate boundary it belongs to the divergent plate boundary so this meadows and grizzles are basically linear belt occurring near the center of the ocean these regions are topographically high and you can say it is techno tectonically unstable also. These regions are shallow focus earthquake. Here, see, it is shallow focus earthquake. And these regions have low magnitude. Okay. Since these regions belong to the shallow focus earthquake as well as low magnitude, it produces low potassium theolites that are most voluminous rock. Uh, you can say most voluminous igneous rock produced in the ocean grazes. So uh, from this concept we come to know the right answer will be this one. Now there is another concept. Some regions are simply called like mid-Atlantic rays, Indian, uh, Central Indian rays, but some are called rise, like specific rise. Now what is the difference between rays and rise? See, this rays is uh, basically a slow spreading. While in a case of rise, it is a fast spreading. The topographic feature for the rise is gentle. Why in a case of a rise, it is irregular. Okay, so this is the difference between rise and the rise. Now moving to the next question. This question belongs to the crystallography. Okay, so the question is which of the following symmetry operation is identical to six bar operation? Now see the six bar operation. We have to first see this six bar belongs to which class. Okay. Now the six bar belongs to class hexagonal. Now we have to see which symmetry operations belong to class hexagonal. So this one is not possible. This one is uh, this one is possible. This one is not possible. This one is not possible. The right answer will be 3 by m. This one you have to buy hat. Okay. This 3 by m symmetry operations is identical to 6 bar. The 6 bar belongs to the class hexagonal. So the right answer will be 2. Now moving to the next question. Equatorial current system in a global ocean are produced by. We know that a current is sometimes produced by uh, density difference. Sometimes it is produced by basically uh, temperature difference and you can say also salinity difference. Now this temperature and salinity is also a function of density. So the density is the main reason. But here uh, we have this equatorial current system. The question is not about thermoaligned circulation. This thermoaligned circulation is again a part of current which is produced by the density difference. Here they are asking about equatorial current system. Okay. Now this equatorial current system is basically uh, have uh, trade winds right here in the uh, equatorial trades uh, equatorial zone we have trade winds this trade wind produce uh, currents like uh, equatorial north equatorial current south equatorial current and counter currents okay equatorial counter currents so the right answer will be i think it's two this is the right answer so here the trade wind uh, dominates over other functions other parameters you can say this rotation of earth is related to Coriolis force. This change in the temperature and the salinity in the polar regions are basically related to thermoaligned circulation. While this high solar radiation and heavy precipitation over an equatorial region has no effect on the current. No direct effect you can say. No direct effect on the uh, current. So now moving to the next question. Which one of the following doesn't apply to the baroclinic temperature? Okay. Baroclinic. And here it is doesn't apply to the baroclinic. Now there are two things, barotropic and baroclinic. 
so what is barotropic first barotropic means in the case of barotropic parameters like density depends upon the pressure okay so in a barotropic atmosphere density is a function of pressure so this one is for barotropic okay this first option is for barotropic it is not for baroclinic so the right answer will be this because here they are asking about doesn't apply in a case of a baroclinic density is a function of pressure as well as temperature both so this is the right and means this is correct for baroclinic but they are asking about doesn't apply no so the right answer will be one so then this three are the like you can say these three belongs to the baroclinic atmosphere so remember one thing first thing is this density depends on the pressure this is for barotropic environment this this three are for baroclinic atmosphere okay now this density depends on both temperature and pressure areas of high atmospheric baroclinicity are characterized by the frequent formation of cyclones also okay second thing this third option geostrophic wind has vertical shear so what is this geostrophic wind means this geostrophic wind basically it is a balance of coriolis force and pressure force and uh, this fourth option if you see vertical shear depends upon the horizontal thermal gradient yeah, this this is true this is true regarding of this baroclinic atmosphere Baroclinic instability is the dominant mechanism for setting the cyclones as well as anticyclones. So remember these three points; these are very important as as per this baroclinic atmosphere uh, uh, is considered. So this baroclinic instability is the dominant mechanism for setting cyclones as well as anticyclones. Remember this; very important. Now, old. how old the oldest fossil recorded on the earth oldest fossils so they are uh, like asking about oldest fossils they never mentioned that either it is single cell or multicellular so we will go for single cells only okay or initial preserved fossil okay now the oldest known fossil are the cyanobacteria from the archean rocks of uh, you can say western australian region that dated around 3.5 billion year old cyanobacteria are the among of uh, you can say uh, one of the earliest microfossils to recognize so the right answer will be 3 uh, uh, greater than 3 billion year because the oldest dated uh, microfossil uh, that is cyanobacteria is of age of 3.5 billion years so the right answer is 3 this is little bit confusing type of question now moving to the next question a geological cross section drawn through a strike line of uniform dipping beds shown the bedding traces as a set of lines that are so here they are asking about uh, bedding traces whenever uh, you draw cross uh, sections uh, through a strike line of uniformly dipping beds in that case uh, if you if you draw this figure no uh, you come to know that all the bedding traces are horizontal okay so simply i will make photo for you okay so suppose see this suppose one bed is over here over here and over here it is something like this so it is horizontal no this is a strike and then it goes all the way down and then this uniformly dipping bed see all the beds are uniformly dipping right so the right answer will be one just imagine it just imagine the question draw the figure that's it 
नाउ मूविंग टू द क्वेश्चन सेवन द माइक्रोवेव रीजन ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम इज मोस्टली एब्सॉर्व बाय विच ऑफ द फ्लोइंग कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द एटमोस्फेयर सो द राइट आंसर विल बी वॉटर एंड ऑक्सीजन सो दे आर आस्किंग अबाउट माइक्रोवेव ओके नाउ दिस माइक्रोवेव हैज मोर वेव लेंथ एज कंपेयर टू द आई आर ओके इट इज नॉट आई आर इन केस ऑफ आई आर इट इज एब्सॉर्ब बाय वॉट टू से इट इज ऑब्जॉर्ब बाय थर्मल रेडिएशन टी आई आर एंड ऑल एन आई आर एंड ऑल दे आर बेसिकली एब्जॉर्ब बाई दिस आई आर रेडिएशन द वॉटर मॉलिकल्स बट हियर वी कैन सी दैट इट इज माइक्रोवेव रीजन इफ यू सी द एटमोस्फेरिक विंडो डायग्राम फॉर यू वी रेज फॉर विजिबल रेज फॉर आई आर एंड माइक्रोवेव you can see that in a oxygen and water zone this microwave region is absorbed this is basically absorbed by this water and h2o so to know this whole uh, thing you have to have this atmospheric window diagram i will show you uh, has this uh, water and carbon dioxide now if you see the options uh, there are, there is only one option in which water is there right so uh, the right answer for this will be uh, oxygen as well as h2o if you see the uh, atmospheric window diagram for this the perfect atmospheric window for oxygen as well as water uh, now here we can see that okay wait so here we can see that in this uh, traction of radiation block versus wavelength diagram we, uh, there is a absorption of water as well as carbon dioxide in this microwave region now in this uh, options we have only one option in which water is there right water is there and some parts of oxygen is also there so the right answer will be this three okay now moving to the next question which one of the following mineral is characterized by lack of cleavage so the right answer here is the quartz it's very easy quartz is uh, never so any cleavage so if you see this calcite it has three set of cleavage this fluorite has octahedral cleavage and this felsa felspar has two cleavage okay here zero cleavage and here octahedral cleavage so the right answer will be 3 moving to the next question atmospheric boundary layer okay now in the atmospheric boundary layer we have to choose this four options so the right option here is uh viscous force cannot be neglected now why why viscous force cannot be neglected see this vis viscous force is a force between a body and a fluid moving over it in the direction so as to oppose the flow this is the basic definition for this viscous force so what is this viscous force this viscous force is basically a force between a body and a fluid moving over it in the direction so as to oppose the flow okay it is the lowest part of the atmosphere this atmospheric boundary layer it is the lowest part of the atmosphere and its behavior is directly influenced by its contact with the planetary surface so we uh, we can't neglect this viscous force no because it is the lowest part and it has some influence of this uh, surface this atmospheric boundary layer has some shearing effect of the surface so we can't neglect this this viscous force is there only okay this uh, atmospheric boundary layer is sometimes also known as planetary boundary layer that is called pbl in short or peblosphere so the right answer will be uh, one only okay now moving to the last question of this session which one of the flowing involved earliest on the earth evolved earliest on the earth so it's very easy again the right answer will be four prokaryotes so what is this prokaryotes so uh, a prokaryotes is a unicellular organism that lacks of membrane uh, bounded nucleus microchondria and all it is the 
earliest known fossils also and uh, their age is around 3.5 billion year these are prokaryotes and there is something uh, called eukaryotes what is eukaryotes so eukaryotes is a organism whose cell have a nucleus enclosed within a membrane and they are um, the oldest known eukary eukaryote is around 1.7 billion year old so for eukaryote it is 1.7 billion year old and for this prokaryote it is 3.5 billion year old so the right answer over here is prokaryote okay so this is the last question uh, i have uh, another question uh, you can say it's a surprise question last question okay so which one of the following is semi conservative element in sea water now this is uh, from marine geochemistry you can say here the right answer will be one i will tell you why what is the reason behind it since this chlorine is a conservative element it is not a semi conservative it is a conservative element it is a major ion present in the ocean so this this is not there okay now uh, then this iron again this iron is a non conservative element sometimes it behaves as a nutrient also so again this one is not possible because this is non conservative and this is conservative uh, the question is all about semi conservative and final uh, co2 it's uh, it's a compound it's not a element so again this is not true it is basically a compound and it is a gas it is in the form of gas so this all three is neglected so the right answer will be ca only okay so that's it for the today uh, hope you like my video uh, we will solve another uh, 10 questions uh, from part b tomorrow so thank you very much